YouTube comment sections are not always the friendliest of stomping grounds. If you reveal that you live off-grid, or worse, you try to teach others how to get started living off-grid, the critics crawl out of the woodwork. Rather than seeing that someone's offering free information to help others along their way, endless debates about what is off-grid enough or informational enough rage. As such, we've received some requests for more specific information on how to buy land, start living off-grid, find the income needed to live the life you want to live. Here's an example question we got. How did you find land that was both affordable to you and suitable for your needs? Did you even buy land or did you move on to family property? How do you live as you want to live? That is, off-grid and avoid harassment or permitting issues from your state or county. How do you both homestead and make the money needed to pay for taxes, maintenance, and other expenses that being a homeowner and landowner involve? For some reason, channels like this never ask answer these questions. They may be unsexy questions, but they're the most important ones, and without those answers, there's nothing. Now, though these questions were posed to me personally, I don't think it's useful for our instead and community to know my specific situation or my specific lifestyle goals as much as my choices. A progression of choices that you can watch to learn one of the many ways you might figure out your own off-grid life. This is a fiercely independent, self-directed lifestyle, which means that there's no one-size-fits-all answer, no fail-proof 10-step plan, no listing online for perfectly harassment-free off-grid properties for sale at rock-bottom prices. So are you really ready for some off-grid questions? I'll do my best to make them useful to you listeners and viewers with all your diverse and varied goals. So let's go. Number one, how did you find land that was affordable and suited your needs? Answer, we looked and we searched and we hunted every day for years. First, we made a list of non-negotiable requirements for our future property based on our personal goals. Now, ours included a south-facing hill, no fracking in the area, and lenient or non-existent building codes, to name a few. Those goals are obviously going to vary by a person. Then, we looked through property listings like it was a second job. We didn't restrict ourselves to a certain region, but looked everywhere and anywhere. Thankfully, most property listing sites can be filtered to a certain price range. It really helped us restrict our searches to an affordable tract of land. Now, second, we did not demand finished homestead. We were willing to move into raw land with no amenities. Some of the properties we looked at didn't even have a road. We were told we'd have to build one ourselves. This willingness opens up a huge range of larger properties at lower prices. Now granted, it also means you're likely to have a bare bones first year as you establish yourself on that land. Many folks who take this route spend their first years in tents, trailers, and vans while they build their home. And finally, now remember, this was a personal choice, we bought property that we can afford in cash. This meant that those years of searching were also years of living a extremely frugally and saving up as much money as possible in preparation. The nice thing was, the more we saved, the more we could expand our search results with every passing season. Now before the critics jump on that, I will add that we are not rich people. I was a classroom teacher and everybody knows that's anything but a six-figure salary. Now I don't say that to brag, but just to prove that even lower income folks can find a property if they try hard, save even harder, and live as simply as possible. Question number two. Did you even buy land or did you move to a family property? Ha! I wish. I, like many back to the landers and homesteaders, am totally on my own in this regard. As I explained above, I bought my land hundreds of miles away from my childhood home and without anyone's financial assistance. For many of us, there isn't a family farm or a family property to use as a launching point. There are no rich uncles sending checks to support our weird hobby. There aren't knowledgeable old grandparents to teach us the ropes. There isn't a cushion of support and wisdom to lean on when times get tough. Instead, there's the great unknown, an uncertain horizon, and newly purchased land at your feet. Deciding to leave your old shirt collar color, old stomping grounds, family and friends, and an original way of life is a worthy journey, but difficult. You may find yourself distanced from your old community, especially if they still live in the city. They will either view you as an interesting, eccentric, weird, or view you as gossip mill fodder. In the meantime, the local yokels in your new rural area will perceive you as a, at a distance, always thinking of you as the new folks, transplants, or that family that moved on to Frank's old place. Question number three, how do you live as you want to live and avoid harassment and permitting issues from your state and county? Now, when you're scoping out a location for your homestead, particularly if you want to live off-grid affordably, picturesque, easily accessible, fertile farmlands will often come with price tags and permit hittles to match. Backwater, backwoods, backside, and nowhere places that no one's ever heard of are far more likely to be forgotten and left alone. Now, I can't give you a list of those locations. You need to find them yourself. Now, if you're willing to put up with long, unlit dirt roads, 
hour-long drives to the grocery store, lack of city services, herds of Roman deer, wild pigs, and neighbors five miles away, you might be able to find the sort of land that comes with the freedom to do whatever you want. Now, we wanted to build an off-grid home when we moved to our land. So before we started, we asked neighbors if there were issues with permitting. They laughed in response, as no one in this area cares about anything, and nobody's paid to check up on anything. That's the ideal response in my book. Now, comedian Jeff Allen has a monologue on this, on his troubles with his own HOA in his suburban community. So we moved to Tennessee. I told my wife, I don't care where we live, just no homeowners. So that's the only rule I have. You can pick wherever we want to live, no homeowners. So we're driving down the street, and we see a family of four on, the co uh, on, the, on their front lawn. All four of them were in the process of burning the family couch on the front lawn. <laughs> I fell out of the car. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. You have, you have brought me to the promised land. <laughs> free from fines, free from annoying restrictions. Now that's the sort of land I believe is your best chance at success and unfettered creativity. You may never see a garbage truck or a snowplow again, but you'll also never have to deal with an HOA or a building inspector either. Your neighbors may live very rough, burn garbage in their front yard and have 10 mangy dogs, but remember, their freedom to do what they want is the same as your freedom to do what you want. Get ready for your family in the city to make endless deliverance jokes. Next question. How do you manage to both homestead and make enough money to make ends meet, pay taxes, and deal with homestead expenses? Figuring out the answer to this question completely depends on your personal philosophies, perspectives on money, and reasons for homesteading in the first place. Off-grid homesteading is a full-time job and doesn't leave room for outside work in most cases. Your perspective on what it means to live well and have have enough will be the deciding factor on whether or not you can manage your money and life on your homestead in a sustainable way. And that basically divides into two different categories of people. Those who can live off-grid and those who just aren't cut out for it. Let's talk about that second group. Who off-grid living isn't for? If wealth to you consists of getting the newest tech, going to the salon and having nice clothes and fancy cars, I don't think you'll ever be able to make them ends meet while running an off-grid homestead. If living well means that you must replicate your formerly on-grid life exactly with solar pile or dishwasher washers, dryers, televisions, flush toilets, and washing machines, you're going to have huge expenses to grapple with. You'll need to work off the homestead in order to have enough money, which will make your work on the homestead neglected or relegated just to the weekend. If the status quo and the positive opinions of your family and friends mean the most to you, then you'll never be able to accept the alternatives required by an affordable off-grid life. If you need to eat out all the time and take vacations, you'll have a hard time controlling your cash flow. If you only want to live off-grid because you're afraid of the future and believe it's the option you're forced into for whatever reason, your life will never be satisfying and you'll always be seeking ways to, you know, fix it, which will come with hefty price tags. However, if wealth to you consists of freedom from trends, land you can roam, not needing to keep up with the tech or fashion fads, and loving your beat up old pickup truck, you just might make it on an off-grid homestead. If living well means that you can learn how to do laundry and dishes by hand with less water, aren't bothered by your DIY compost and toilet, and can entertain yourself without depending on a TV, maybe you can make it on an off-grid homestead. If you couldn't care less about the status quo and don't mind being misunderstood and gossiped about by your friends and family, you'll also be able to accept the alternatives required by an affordable off-grid life. If you are delighted to be able to cook for your family, don't need a vacation from the land that you love, and have freed yourself from addictions, you'll have a far better time managing your expenses. And if you want to live off-grid because it's a life you love, regardless of world events or politics, you'll feel joy in both times of plenty and want. Basically, you can make living off-grid as cheap or as expensive as you want to. If you want the glitzy homes and the fancy doodads that a lot of online off-grid personalities and influencers tout, you'll go into debt pretty quickly. If your expenses are few because you take care of things on your own most of the time, you can make do with a few side hustles for your income. A self-employment patchwork of selling handicrafts, handyman services, or freelance work can get you by if you're willing to live lightly. So all that said, I'd like to offer some of my own pro tips for the off-grid life. The following are in line with my personal philosophy for off-grid living, and I don't expect many people to agree with all of them. If you find these ideas stifling or impossible, then this life isn't for you, and that's fine. But if you find these helpful, challenging, or inspiring, great! Maybe you're one of the rare ones. Get off and stay off social media. It saps your joy, may expose your life to your critics who don't have the right to see it anyway, and doesn't make the real in-person relationships that the off-grid folks need. Be careful about what sources you trust, especially if they're written by self-proclaimed off-grid experts, which honestly is something I will never claim. Lots of folks online are trying to sell something, and many modern books are written by folks who don't actually know as much as they say they do. Don't expect anyone on the internet to help you personally get off-grid. Once you actually are off-grid, there won't be anyone to hold your hand there anyway. Anyway. Only keep animals you can sustain on your own land. If you can't mainly feed your critters on your own pastures and need to truck in all their food, they're going to suck away funds faster than you can say hobby farm. 
don't make off-grid living a religion. Don't listen to those self-appointed priests who have decided what is and what is not an off-grid sin. You're far better off working on your land and enjoying your life than getting involved in legalistic comic debates online. Relearn how to work hard. Honestly, don't expect anything to be handed to you. Don't complain about your lot in life. This is what you chose. And if you find yourself discontent with dirty fingernails, sweat-stained shirts, and worn-out boots, then just choose a different lifestyle. Simple as that. Now, does anybody remember that PBS show from the 90s, Zoom? It was all about kids experimenting and crafting on their own. One of the best lines from their theme song was, And if you like what you see, turn off your TV and do it! It's surprisingly good advice for the armchair off-grid crowd, too. If you like the idea of this life, stop trying to get answers from articles, magazines, or YouTube channels. Turn off your computer and go get your hands dirty. That's the only way you'll find the answers you're looking for. That's how I found mine. Now, if you want a launching point for where to get started, peruse some of these earlier articles on off-grid living that we've posted over on InSetting and find a project to get you going. We'll put the links in the description box below. 